call got get counts and pass in our circuit. And there it is. That's the result of executing our quantum circuit. Hello everyone, welcome back to Coding with Qiskit. So traditionally when we learn new programming languages, the first application that we write is what's called the Hello World application. And the purpose of this application is to show first that you've installed the programming language correctly on your computer, and second to walk you through what a regular application cycle looks like. So how you program an application and get it to execution, that kind of workflow. So in this video, what I hope to achieve is show you that workflow by running your first Hello World application in quantum mechanics using Qiskit. So in the previous episode, we showed you how to install Qiskit on your computer. And in this episode, what we'll do is get you to run your first quantum program. So hopefully by now you've installed Qiskit. And what I'm going to do is I have my terminal window open. I'm going to start a Jupyter notebook where I'll start writing code to executing Qiskit. So I have my terminal window open, as you can see here, and I'm going to write Jupyter notebook and hit enter. And that gives me a new Jupyter window on which I can start programming. Okay, so now that we've opened a blank notebook, what we're going to do is start writing code in Qiskit. Now, for those of you who are familiar with Python, Qiskit is written in Python, so a lot of it will look very familiar to you. And for those of you that don't know, don't worry, we'll get through the fundamentals that we need before building complicated quantum circuits. So follow along. So the first thing that I'm going to do is to do from Qiskit, import everything. Once I've imported everything from Qiskit, the next part is to build the quantum circuit. And to build this quantum circuit, as I promised, we're going to be building a two qubit quantum circuit. So what I'm going to do is first to create a two qubit quantum register. And then I'm going to build a two classical bit classical register so that I can take measurements from these quantum bits. If I can just type better. So now we've built a quantum register and a classical register, and now we can build a circuit using those two. Now we've created a quantum circuit. And at any point that we modify the circuit, if you want to look at what the circuit looks like, you can draw it out by doing the following. I'll do this one line here so that we can see our drawings and then I'll just do circuit.draw. So as you can see, what we have is two quantum bits in the circuit and two classical bits in the circuit. The quantum bits are Q0 sub zero and Q0 sub one, and the classical bits are C0 sub zero and C0 sub one. All right, now this circuit is not very interesting. There aren't too many interesting things going on here. There are no gates. So what we're going to do is now build up the gates into the circuit. So in order to create entanglement, the first step is to apply what's known as a Hadamard gate uh, onto the first qubit. And so what I'm going to do is circuit.hadamard, which is H for short, and I'm going to apply it on the first qubit. So once we've done that, again, you can apply your drawing function. And this time what I'm going to do is show you a way to make a better plot of your circuit instead of using something that's text-based to use something that plots out in matplotlib. So now that you have a Hadamard gate applied to the first qubit, you see that H that showed up, we're going to then create a two qubit operation called a controlled X. And that's done by doing the following. This two qubit operation is like a logical if, so it's going to be the quantum version of if this, then that and the control is going to be the first qubit, and the target of that operation is going to be the second qubit. Sorry. And there we go. Let's look at how our circuit looks. There we go. Now our quantum circuit is composed of a Hadamard gate and a controlled knot. And the idea here is now with these two simple operations, 
we're able to generate entanglement between Q0 sub 0 and Q0 sub 1. So now that we've built our quantum circuit using this Hadamard gate and controlled X gate, what we're going to do is measure the quantum bits or qubits and take those measurements and store them into the classical bits. And what we're going to do is write out that code to do that, circuit.measure. What I'm going to do is take the results from measuring the qubits in the quantum register and store them in the classical register. Okay, so we've done this. By the way, those outputs that show up are simply uh, related to a quirk of Jupyter notebooks. I wouldn't worry about them for now. So your circuit has measurements built into it. Again, as always, you can look at what your circuit looks like at any moment, moment by doing circuit.draw. Okay, so this is what our circuit looks like finally. We have our quantum operations, the Hadamard and controlled X gate, and we have the measurement so that we can understand what happened in the quantum circuit at the end. So the next step is to run the circuit, and I'm going to do two things. The first thing I'm going to do is run this quantum circuit on my classical computer and see what happens when I simulate a quantum computer here. And then when I'm, once I'm confident with the quantum circuit, what I'm going to do is send it off to a real device at IBM and then see the results that come out of running this quantum circuit on a real device. So in order to simulate the circuit, what I'm going to do is use the air component of Qiskit. The idea here is that air is what we use when we need to do simulations of our quantum circuits on our local computer. So the simulator can be imported from air by doing air.getBackend and the name of the simulator is Chasm Simulator. If you're curious, the name Chasm comes from quantum assembly language. Okay, now that we've imported our simulator, it's time to execute the circuit. So what I'll do is call execute. What I'm doing is executing the circuit that I've built so far, and what I'll be using is the simulator as a backend. So the backend on which I'm executing is the simulator that I've imported. And that's it. So now that we've executed our quantum circuit, the question is, what are the results that came out of that execution? Once we've executed our quantum circuit, let's get the results back by doing dot result and assign them to a variable called result. So now the result variable holds the information that came back from executing that circuit. Let's look at what result itself contains. So to do that, what I'm going to do is import visualization tools from Qiskit. So what I'm going to do is from qiskit.tools.visualization import plot histogram. Once I have this plot histogram function imported from Qiskit, what I'm going to do is take that result call got get counts and pass in our circuit. And there it is. That's the result of executing our quantum circuit. So as you can see, we get roughly 50% or with 0 0.5 probability, 0, 0, and with almost 0 0.5 probability, 1, 1. So these, these small errors are because we're running a limited number of shots on our simulation instead of an infinite number of shots. Now that we're confident that our circuit is doing what we expect, let's run it on a quantum computer at IBM and see what happens. So in the previous video, you learned how to take your API token from the IBM quantum experience and save it on your computer so that you can access IBM's quantum devices. So let's load our account here. So I'm going to write out ibmq.loadaccount. Okay, so once our account is loaded, we're ready to choose the device on which to run our code and then to continue to get results. So once I've loaded my account, I am going to say provider is equal to ibmq.getProvider and I'm going to say the provider is ibm-q, hit shift enter, and then I'm going to say the quantum computer with which we're working is provider.getBackend uh, the name of that particular device we'll be working with is IBM Q underscore 16 underscore Melbourne. This is just what we name our devices. The device isn't actually located anywhere in Melbourne. Uh, we're going to say the job is execute the circuit that we've built on the back end, which is called QCOM. Going to 
remove these spaces and spell circuit properly. And then I am going to say from kiskit.tools.monitor import job monitor. So the idea here is that these jobs are submitted to the real devices and because they're public devices, there's a queue. So the job monitor allows me to say job monitor, taking in the argument of the current job that we started. And we see that the job is queued now. And in fact, it's uh, job number two in the queue. Depending on how busy the quantum devices are at that time, the job might take a few minutes. And once you get this message that the job has successfully run, we can say result is job.result. Next, we'll plot the results by saying plot histogram of the result.getCount and I'll pass in the circuit as an argument. So looking at these results, let's compare how they look against what we saw with a simulator. So you see the difference between the two is that in a simulated case, you only got 0, 0, and 1, 1. But when the code was run on a real quantum device, we also had a small number of results showing up in 0, 1, and 1, 0, even though the majority of results are still in the 0, 0 state and the 1, 1 state. So let's think a little bit about why that happens. The difference between the simulated case and the code that was run on the real quantum device is that the simulator simulates a perfect quantum device. In the meantime, the real quantum device is susceptible to small quantum errors. These quantum errors are getting improved every day as a result of the technology improving. So we expect to see these counts getting lower and lower and the results getting closer and closer to the ideal simulations. However, as you can see here, the devices are not perfect today. And that is why you see a difference in results, a small change from what you see with the perfect quantum computer simulated on our laptop. So there you have it. We've gone from start to finish in creating our first quantum Hello World application. So now the question becomes, where do we go from here? Would you like to see more focus on quantum games, quantum applications, the devices themselves? Would you like to learn more about how these applications come in in industry? Where do we go from here? Let us know in the comments down below and we'll see you in the next video.